I've made this base form for the High Elven Shield from Lord of the Rings, so in this video I'm going to be covering the whole thing in fiberglass and some carbon fiber and using a vacuum bagging setup to squish all of those layers together and make this more durable, less flexible. As you can see here, it still has a good bit of bend to it. It's not locked into that curved shape. So I'm gonna be putting this on top of that surfboard that the piece was cut out from so that it will have that curved shape and hopefully this fiberglass covering is going to uh, make that stiff enough so that it doesn't keep wanting to pop out and go more flat. So I've got this big sheet of fiberglass cloth and I'm gluing that in using some spray adhesive. Now from the small test that I already did, I, I realized that it's gonna be a bit of a challenge to get this into all of the many small details on this shield. So that's why I'm most definitely wanting to glue it down first this time. So it's a bit of finagling to get this situated properly, but it does have enough uh, stretch to it that you can get around the curves pretty well. So I started at the most difficult spot and glued it to that raised centerpiece first, and then just worked my way out from there, trimming as I went to get rid of any excess. And I did flip the edges around the back this time. From the test, I figured out that that needed to be done. We've got the fiberglass wrapped around all of the edges, especially those foam parts that I've added. So those cutouts, they didn't have any walls, but I added the walls just from some, some craft foam that's hot glued in place. Definitely needs to be strengthened there, so I'm depending on the fiberglass to take care of that for me. It didn't want to wrap around that area very well, so I had to cut lots of, um, lots of lines into it so that I could fold those pieces back, get it as well situated as possible, but then I'll just have to clean up later any parts that weren't perfect, so no big deal. I don't really like this spray adhesive, that's why I'm using it up on this project, because I don't care if it goes through to the front a little bit from having to use too much, since it's not super sticky anyways. I'm going to use Easy Lamb Resin for this. I mixed up, <laughs> well it wasn't enough, but I mixed up a smallish batch and gave it a really good stir, of course, and I just started spreading this over the whole thing. It did take more resin than I was expecting, I guess it's just such a big piece <laughs> compared to the small tester but I prefer not to mix up too much resin up front. So I'm using the foam brush so I don't have to worry about getting bristles falling out because that was kind of a pain before. But it does take some work to press this resin into the fabric well enough to fully soak in and make sure these details have the best chance of po as possible of coming through properly on the finished version. So I covered that in a piece of perforated peel ply so that any ex excess resin is able to come through to the front instead of pooling in the details. I had to do it in a couple of parts because this isn't particularly stretchy, so I just kind of made it work and cut areas out where they needed to and just added in extra pieces. It stayed in place for the most part, but I know it is going to shift in some areas. But again, I'll just worry about that later and clean it up in the end result. So. It's in the vacuum bag now. You can see there's some resin soaked through into that breather cloth through all the perforations. Great, this just needs to sit there and bake and cure for the next 24 hours. It does seem to be showing the details well enough, so that's great. That's what's nice about the vacuum bagging setup is it does make sure that fabric is pressed in as well as possible. So it's all cured now. I'm gonna pop it out of the bag. And I didn't have to monitor this at all. The EasyVac system turns itself on and off automatically. So it's just been doing its thing for the last day. So the breather cloth there does have some resin in it, not a ton. So I got pretty close to the right amount of resin in there. And it did stick in a couple of spots. But overall, the result came out as well as I could have hoped. Everything peeled off just fine and it is more rigid now. Although I would say it is not rigid enough still. It still kind of wants to bend in ways it shouldn't and it still hasn't quite locked in the curve along the shorter axis there. Of course I had a piece of peel ply over the surfboard there so it didn't stick, it just peels right off but that acted as a form so that it's pressed up against it and has something to give it the correct shape. So here's where some of the breather cloth kind of sneaked its way under the peel ply and it kind of got stuck on there, so I do need to sand that off later. Also, there are some ridges of extra resin in a few places, just where the, um, the peel ply kind of bunched up a tad. And also, there was a bit of a void at the top of the raised area where there was some air and not quite enough resin to fill it in. Then there's those tiny little bumps over the whole thing just from the peel ply. So this all needs to be 
cleaned up a bit, sanded down as expected. The foam pieces there are already significantly sturdier, although not quite sturdy enough just yet. My woven detail seems to have come through pretty well, but again, everything's still, it's pretty decent on the surface now, but the overall shield has a bit too much flex for it. So first I gotta just clean up these edges. I'm using a craft knife to trim off any excess right up against that surfboard plastic gives you a good cut line. And then of course at the bottom of those foam inset walls. I'm also trying to trim away as much of the uh, excess resin on top anywhere. It had a bit of a ridge pooled there and just generally get this to a higher level of uh, smoothness wherever possible and then we'll just further refine it as we go. So I've used up a whole bunch of my scraps of carbon fiber left over from various projects and I've added those to reinforce the key areas where I want this to be less flexible. And I just again use the spray adhesive to stick those all down. The back it doesn't need to be pretty. It's not a, I'm, I'm trying to do kind of like a film version that I saw. I really liked how it kind of has a story to it where, you know, the back isn't beautiful. The front is the part that's going to show in the film. So that's the way I'm going with this. So I'm not worried about this looking a bit crazy at the moment. I added resin into the carbon fiber first so I could make sure that it's soaked down in through all of those layers. Then over top of that, I'm just going to put one large piece of fiberglass. This is a different fiberglass than I used on the front. It's not a fine finish, but it's nice and thick. It's got kind of two layers built into it, and it does conform well even to that deep dished shape in the back. And this took quite a bit of resin. Again, some finagling to get it situated properly on those insets, the walls of the cutouts. And I just, again, trimmed as I went. So I'm just adding resin making sure it soaks through all of the layers and sticks down properly. This did take quite a bit of resin. Still got plenty of the Easy Lamb though, because I got some pretty large bottles there. So yeah, it's going to make it a bit heavier, but it's worth it to make this a bit thicker for one thing, and just add some rigidity into those key areas. I left a tad of overhang on all edges that I, I can just trim off at the end. I wanted to make sure I didn't have any parts that didn't have the fiberglass so that it would be an even thickness along the edge. I first put it into the bag without the surfboard backing just so I could try to make sure that that central recessed part got stuck down properly. I left it in there for maybe an hour or two till it seemed like it was gelled and starting to stick down. Then I took it back out of the bag, put it on the surfboard backing, popped that back into the vacuum bag. This is a really big vacuum bag. It's like 36 inches wide and six plus feet long. Left that for another day and then peeled off the peel ply. So I used the non-perforated peel ply on the back because I wanted this to be nice and resin rich. Since I am trying to reinforce it, it's not an aesthetic layer. I also put the breather cloth in there just so the air would be able to suck out pretty well and hopefully get it pushed nicely against the surfboard. So it is most definitely more rigid. This is looking pretty good now. The shorter axis there, it definitely has locked in the curve shape now. That's perfect. Long ways, it's still a tad flexible, but I think we can deal with that later. For now, I just need to clean up these edges once again. I used the Dremel to sand away all of the excess fiberglass and resin along all of the edges, just right up against that plastic that's in there again. It makes a really nice sanding line. The foam walls for those cutouts are still having a bit of trouble, but I just sanded back the fiberglass and resin to just about into the foam. Try not to go into the foam too much because I don't want it to have exposed foam. It's not good for painting, uh, but I can go ahead and add some more resin to those edges later. So just at each stage, getting it to as good a place as possible before adding the next layer. For the center dished part there, now the Fiberglass did kind of bubble up a bit, so I had to just sand that away down to the 3D printed surface underneath. It's not needed structurally really, so just aesthetically it looks better if it's a bit smoother. And also there were just some voids back there I didn't want to have to deal with, so I just sanded that away and that was perfect. These foam bits now are quite sturdy, no worries there. So I sanded that down again, just the whole top surface, and I added another coat of resin that was supposed to be an aesthetic coat to seal in any areas where they weren't, the uh, foam wasn't quite covered if I accidentally sanded into that a bit or any 
of those bubbled voids. However, I made the mistake of leaving this outside for too long. The dew settled on it, and when it did finally cure, it's got some serious orange peel. So unfortunately, now I have to sand this again, probably several times, but you know, at least it did cure. So I sanded it once here and then got rid of all the dust and I'm going to add the primer now. So first I just used up a bit of leftover filler primer I had at the bottom of a can that I wanted to get rid of. Then I switched over just to um, some regular primer. All I'm aiming for right now is to make it easier to see where I need to fill in any voids and where I'm going to need to sand most. So the resin going all crazy like that from the moisture was a good reminder of why I like vacuum bagging so much. It's not always practical to do it that way, but you can bet that I will be using vacuum bagging anytime that I can because it just eliminates that whole issue with the moisture. It's pretty awesome. Now that it's got some paint on it, you can finally see the whole effect as opposed to seeing the foam on the surfboard. So that's kind of cool. It is wanting to warp just a bit at the end, but I think we'll be able to fix that with the handle later on. So I filled in any voids with just some plastic wood filler that worked pretty well sanded it again and it's going to need more finishing work obviously but for now i don't want to take it too far and then risk damaging that surface while i'm working on the back because this still needs a handle so i'm thinking i've got a whole bunch of scraps of pvc that i think i can put together a handle from i don't have anything that's quite long enough but i think i can 3d print some connectors and make that work again, use up some more scraps is kind of the theme of this project. So I'm pretty sure I'm not the only person who's hoarding scraps from different projects. So I am curious, what are you hoarding? And have you found a way to put those leftovers to use? What's your favorite project maybe that you've done that used up some leftovers from other projects? I'm pretty sure that most of us probably have a good stock of foam or empty 3D printer spools. <laughs> So maybe we can figure out some ways to use up, use up our collective stockpiles of scraps. I've got to go ahead and do some planning on the handle for this and figure out exactly how I'm going to put that together. In the meantime, I have dozens of videos of projects past that you can check out. I'll add a couple of them up onto the screen here. My videos are really just about exploring and experimenting and learning to trust that design process because in the end that's how i'm going to get to the best possible solution based on the resources skills and time that i have available right now right at that moment for that particular project so hopefully you find something there you can enjoy have a great weekend and i'll see you soon